Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, my friend, Pastor Matt Richard. You're back. How's it going? It's good to see you, Harrison. Uh, we, we, we got some green grass coming up here in North Dakota. So uh, <laughs> 72 degrees here this week. It's going to be... It's hard to have a bad day, like the first time you can roll down the windows in your truck. Like, it's just, it's harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I'm going to bust out the suntan lotion at 72 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we need it at this point in time. There's a there's a complexion uh, that we have in common. Um <laughs> <laughs> this is the springtime thing. So we're also in Easter. Uh, we're getting ready as as we record this for for Good Shepherd Sunday. You were sitting down with Ezekiel chapter four and and came up with a real good question, uh, Pastor. What does Jesus have to say about pastors, about shepherds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're looking at uh, this morning with a couple of the pastors uh, upcoming text from Ezekiel, and he's talking about good shepherds and bad shepherds. And so first, maybe we should say first of all, what what is what is the word shepherd in our in our vernacular? Sure. Uh, my understanding is the word pastor is Latin for shepherd. And so, uh, what makes a pastor? A pastor is somebody who has sheep. And so, I mean, uh, if you come across a person and say, "What what do you do for a living?" Well, I'm I'm, I'm a shepherd. Okay. Well, where's your flock? Well, I don't have any. Well, then you're really not, yeah. you know, really not a shepherd, right? I mean, yeah. it, it, a teacher has students, a shepherd has sheep, uh, so forth. And so uh, what does Jesus say about pastors? Pastors, they feed the flock. Hmm. Uh, they're there for the sheep. Uh, when the wolf comes, they don't run like a hired hand. Uh, so the, the momentum of a shepherd is always down to the sheep, always down to the sheep, the betterment of the sheep. Um, this comes back to the whole idea of even Jesus as, as the good shepherd. Uh, he did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many, that he's always down towards the sheep to uh, see see them through, to tend to their wounds, to feed them, to nourish them, to protect them from the wolves, the wolves of death, and uh, so forth. It It's so, it, it works really well in sort of in hyperbole, in in parable, uh, in picturesque imagery. But when you start to see it on a Sunday morning, like I, I, it's hard to sort of see the guy up there in in the the, the white dress uh, swinging a staff at a wolf. Uh, so connect this to to real life because I, I think this is it. Everybody sort of likes the idea of Jesus as the good shepherd and and high, you know he he picks me up and puts me on his shoulders and carries me home. But how does this happen with with your pastor in the day to day? Because like this is actually I think one of those places where a lot of people struggle in church is well my pastor. I can, I can give you a lot of reasons why he's not Jesus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe a funny way to go on this is we have a, uh, uh humor me on this. We have a, we have mm. a statue, uh, of, of Jesus, uh, that's, that was donated to our church many, many years ago. And it's up front. And, uh, my elders, uh, uh full disclosure, my elders kind of, sometimes they kind of cringe at it because it's a picture of Jesus and mm. he has a staff and he's mm. holding the sheep. Sure. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. He's holding the sheep, but my, my, now my, the elders at my church, they tend to be kind of guys, guys. And they kind of look and they're like, well, he's cuddling a sheep. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, well, they, they don't really find that very inspiring. Let's just say it that way. And so one of the, one of the uh, members of St. Paul's had an idea. He said, you know, Pastor Richard, uh, actually, no, it was, it was our associate pastor here. He said, you know, we should put a dead snake underneath his foot. Ooh. And I said, what? He said, put a dead snake underneath his foot. Yeah. And so then that way, then what's, what's happening? He's not only cuddling the sheep, a uh, little little lamb, right? But he's what saving the lamb from the serpent right. that was out to, to attack him. Yeah. And I'm like, that's brilliant. So I, we're actually going to, we've been looking on Amazon to try and find rubber snakes. And we're going to put a rubber snake under there, mount it in the You got it farmers, with... like somewhere somebody's taking a shovel to one, you'd be fine. <laughs> but, but just get, yeah, throw, throw one down there, right? But 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 the fact of the matter is, is we, we, we can look at a shepherd and say, you know, that's good that a shepherd takes care for the sheep. And there's that nurturing yeah. quality, which we, which we'd all, you know, say, yeah, that, that there's something good about it. But there's an aspect to a masculinity aspect to it as well, that the shepherd fights the wolves. Uh, the mm -hmm. shepherd crushes the head of the snake, uh, that the shepherd is, is there to protect the sheep. And so how does that happen for the under shepherd, the pastor of the local church? He feeds the sheep through the word and sacrament, but he also what? He attacks false theology. Uh, you look at First uh, and Second Timothy and Titus. Uh, Paul says to Timothy and Titus, watch the sound doctrine. Uh, watch the sound doctrine. Uh, there's gonna be a time coming where people want their ears tickled. They'll go seek out other people to tickle those ears, but the pastor is to what to remain steadfast in good times and bad to call out false doctrine, to feed the sheep with the good word of God and, uh, to, to buffer that essentially. 
See, that's a different thing then. I think a lot of people imagine pastor as like a Jesus hype man. So you hype Jesus, and then because of Jesus, you hype me up. Um, it, it's your job to sort of inspire me, to make me feel good, to make me want to do the things that I know I should want to do, but I, 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 I should want to be sorry for my sin, so make me sorry. And I should want to love my neighbor better, so make me want to. Like, hype me up. And, and that's that's a different thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, again, the pastor is is to to tend to the sheep by delivering not his word, but obviously what you know right here, the word of God, and to proclaim the word of God. But the the shepherd is also to look out for the dangers uh, in the midst of the sheep, and and there are going to be sheep that are actually going to be wounded from life, wounded from sin, wounded from the arrows of the devil, uh, wounded from the ideologies of the world. And that pastor is to what tend to those wounds by the means of grace and the word of God itself. However, at times, too, there's also going to be sheep, as, as we hear in the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 34, talks about uh, that there are going to be some sheep that are going to be fat and strong. And uh, there's not very good words. They're, the words are very, very harsh against those strong and those fat sheep. In other words, uh, at times, the sheep uh, may need a little bit of uh, prodding with that rod uh, to knock some sense into them, uh, you know, from that perspective as well. But I, again, we, I think it's important for us to understand that the shepherd needs to discern between sheep and wolves. And so that that staff is to be swung hard at wolves. Uh, and, and, and there are wolves in the church and outside the church. And so the pastor needs to be strong against wolves. But with the sheep, uh, the pastor is always uh, the way of love. And sometimes that means what? Delivering the good gospel. And sometimes maybe a little bit of that harsh law to convict of sin, but ultimately for the good of the sheep. Uh, for the conviction of sin and for the assurance of the gospel. And so there's a difference between those kind of sheep and then also where the wolves where you know, the pastor needs to swing hard at the wolves. So, yeah, I, you, you mentioned this verse. I'm going to read it. Uh, we're, we're Ezekiel 34, verse 16. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong. I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Uh, like, what does this mean? Because I, I get what you're saying that like there are places that, that the pastor's job is actually not to hype you up in the thing that you want. But but how do you identify the fat and the strong? Because it, that, that sounds like a thing I don't want to be, Yeah. <laughs> even though it sounds like a thing that I kind of want to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So, so you know, we, we think about this as really a law gospel answer, I would say that, that when it comes to, uh, you know, those that are broken, those that are crushed by their sin, um, the poor in spirit, they need the gospel. Uh, those are prideful, they need the law itself. And so there are going to be times where uh, dealing with the parish, a pastor is going to look at the parish, and there's going to be times where uh, the parish is going to need a real strong dose of the law, which we always do, but, but specifically applied uh, in the midst of apathy or in the midst of um, maybe uh, uh, whatever sin might be there to, to, to shake that person. Oh, let's say it this way. Paul talks about sobering up, right? To sober up the flock. And many times we, all of us as Christians, need to be sobered up from our sins, uh, sobered up from maybe the, uh, uh, the, 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 the toxicity of, of different ideologies of the world or the seduction of the devil and so forth, because uh, that will lead us to what? Basically becoming fat sheep that are apathetic, who are not in need of Jesus. And so there will be times where that will need to happen, uh, where the pastor will uh, bring a little bit of that stern law uh, to, to shake that loose so that the sheep might always be abiding in that flock, receiving uh, the goodness of Christ. So, I, I mean, there, there's a place for this that then inside of our own language. It's not that your pastor's job is to kill you or run you out of the church, but it, it's it's the pastor's job to, uh, to, to be the mouth of God who, by his holy baptism, drowns old Adam every day. So that the new man can emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. If I'm going to live simply as I want to live, uh, I have no room in my life for a pastor. Like because I don't want somebody to tell me to to put to death the things of the flesh. Um, I, I have no desire to to hear that law. So so your pastor then exists not not to kill you or to hurt your feelings, but to to point to ask: Is this a good thing or a bad thing? And if it's a bad thing, let it stay on the cross with Jesus. Stop trying to pry it up and, and have round two with it. And if it's a good thing, let's lean into that. If it's a thing where Jesus is, is, is needed, here is Jesus for you. Here is a balm to your wounds. Here is rescue from the serpent. Here is, here is hope for, for dark days. But those things have to exist hand in hand. It can't be just one or the other. Yeah. 
Well, and, and this is the whole thing too, is we think about sheep, all these analogies of the, the, the sheep and the shepherd, uh, sheep, they tend to wander. I mean, there's that sense of wandering mm -hmm. and that old hymn that we're prone to wander. We're prone to leave the God that loves us, the God that we love. And we're always prone to go to different green pastures and, and, and we just take off and sheep can have that tendency just to take off. And that's where the ship, the shepherd comes and he, what he's pulling them back, get back to where you belong, back to the flock, back to the church, back to the ark, back to your baptisms, back to the supper, back to the gospel. And uh, that's that's the calling of the pastor to deliver that. And there are times, again, where, uh, you know, the pastor is called not only to nurture, um, but also to bring uh, that law as well, law and gospel. And then again, we would just differentiate from uh, the sheep as well as the wolf. And with the wolf, in, in my humble opinion, the wolves, uh, sometimes pastors can't be hard enough on wolves. Hmm. And so, man, I, I don't want to get in the ditch too far, but on this, but many times uh, what I see with pastors, and I'm guilty of this myself, you'll see, you'll see a sheep acting badly and then we'll want to treat a sheep like a wolf. And then yet we have a wolf and we will uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wimp out, we'll become a hired hand as a pastor, and we won't put our foot down against a wolf. Yeah. And so wolves need to be, what, opposed big time because they can destroy and kill and steal and destroy faith, uh, wreak havoc on a church. But then there are times where uh, not every sheep that acts badly or a sheep that's unhealthy, uh, we can't immediately jump to that sheep being a wolf. Sometimes sheep are just, what, hurt. Sometimes so they're just confused. Sometimes... Man, they 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 they've eaten too much grain. They get bloated. Let's just say, you know, and 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 so those times when that happens, uh, the shepherd needs to be stern but gracious at the same time with a wandering sheep. Sure. So how how do you tell between a sheep and a wolf? Yeah, uh, between a sheep and a wolf, uh, Paul lays this out in 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 the book of Acts as well as as well as elsewhere. The characteristics of a wolf. Uh, the wolf is is wanting to kill and steal and destroy faith. I mean, there's some definitely some telltale signs on that where, you know, you look at a sheep and uh, then maybe it's gone wandering or confused. Uh, it, it's not necessarily intentional. It's going to be more of a passive uh, being, being bewitched, if you will. I mean, think of Paul, what he says in Galatians 6, uh, you who are spiritual, restore those um, who have yeah, restored gently, uh, those who have been uh, uh, ensnared in it. And so, one would be a willing, a willingly uh, pursuit of, uh, of, of self, uh, self control and power and tyranny of a wolf, uh, versus a sheep who has been ensnared in a sin. Uh, very, very drastic, very, very drastic difference between the two. And so, I, I cannot stress this enough. We were to always be tender. Pastors are to be tender with sheep uh, when they're when they're hurt and wounded, and also when they're erring. Uh, because Jesus is tender with us as his sheep. But when it comes to the wolves, uh, not an inch is to be given. Because you look at Jesus, he did not give an inch to Satan. He did not give an inch to the uh, radical, uh, pharisaical rulers who were wanting to destroy the flock. And we look in the Old Testament history, those rulers who what ruled as wicked shepherds, they were judged harshly. So your, your pastor then, your shepherd, he he steps on the snakes. He he, he beats up the wolves. Any any holds the, the sheep because he is Jesus mouth. Jesus speaks the law that, that crushes the devil and, and fends off the wolves, but, but also the, the gospel then that, that nurtures and tenders the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, again, it's, it's professing the name of Christ, walking in the stead in the place of Christ, uh, as a under shepherd, as a minion, fulfilling what Christ has called pastors to do. And it's not our own will, but it's what Jesus wants for his flock. So that ultimately all these sheep, including ourselves, that we may have a blessed end to abide and be tucked into our graves in Jesus as his sheep to await the resurrection. Amen. Amen.